Hello and welcome back to my channel, Rover Turbo. In this video, we're doing the cam belt, uh, water pump and auxiliary belt on this Range Rover Evoque. Now this car has the 2.2 uh, diesel uh, engine, which is shared with the same platform as the Freelander. Uh, it's a PSA engine, so it's a, um, a Peugeot derived Ford, I think, development engine. Anyway, it's a very similar engine to a lot of engines that are in Fords and uh, the 2.2 versions of these and the Freelanders. So that's what we're going to be doing. While I remember, I have done a video on a, how to service, a major service on one of these, oil filter change, fuel filter, pollen filter. So I'll link that up, up here. So check that out if you want to see how to do a full service on one of these. Right, so this is everything that I've got. I've got some uh, neat antifreeze. I've got a water pump and I've got the cam belt. So this is a, a Gates cam belt that comes with the belt, it comes with an idler and it comes with the tensioner. Uh, and there's a bolt, I believe that's the crankshaft bolt. I've also got the instructions of how it's all timed up, but I'll go through that obviously when I'm going through it. But just to give you an idea of when these belts are due, auxiliary belt is due at 144,000 miles or nine years, but the timing belt is due 112,000 miles or seven years. Right, so this is the basic outline of the the belt and the tensioner. So it's quite simple on these. You've got a locking pin, which I think is you can use a six mil drill bit um, in a hole in the uh, camshaft pulley at the top. And at the bottom, you've got a keyway, um, but it's slotted in the actual sprocket. But again, I'll show you when I get to it. So there's actually a slot in the, in the sprocket, which you have to make sure is in the center because it can go either way. Um, this is a locking tool, I'm not going to use that. Taking the starter motor out, I'm not going to do that. That's literally just to stop the bottom end moving and to be able to do the crankshaft bolt, which I, I'm not going to need to do. And it basically just shows you where the timing, where the, the tensioner has to be when you time it up. So that's basically that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to film um, as much of this as possible. Um, obviously, the basics are removing the, 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 the engine cover, this pipe, obviously the engine mount, anything that's in the way, the wheel, the wheel arch liner, and anything underneath that we need to get to, because obviously we're gonna need to drop the coolant out of it, um, otherwise it's just gonna go all over the floor, which it probably will do anyway, and obviously strip all this down to be able to actually get to the cam belt itself. So I'm gonna get it on the ramp, get some, you know, get in a position where I can get started and then obviously we'll go for it. All right, I'm gonna start by taking off the road wheel. Got to got my lock and wheel nut on there. This is a 21 mil. And then we've got the wheel arch liner, which is this thing here, which basically goes over the entire wheel arch. So I'm going to undo all of the clips and stuff that hold this on. I may, oh, it's actually in two pieces. It's in two pieces. So this section comes out. So we can unscrew this, take out all the clips and take this section off. Right, it took me a while to work that out. Um, you have to pop off this piece of trim because underneath it, stupid design, there's a little tab that goes underneath. There's a little plastic trim piece. One of these little plastic things here, they go in there. So obviously you have to undo all of those. There's one here, there's one up there, and then you have to peel that off, and then obviously then the wheel arch trim comes out and also the 
you can see this. This was clipped to it as well, so make sure you unclip that. Right, and then uh, here we've got obviously the crankshaft pulley. I'm assuming that just pulls out. Behind there, obviously, you've got the nut. Right, I just thought I would have a go at getting this off. And it's stuck on. <laughs> it's stuck on to the pulley. So I've torn it getting it off. I guess I'll just have to glue it back together, won't I? Use some silicone. Splurge it around there. Splurge it in there. Splurge it in there. But yeah, it's actually glued to the crankshaft pulley. So yeah, and also on here, Ford. Ford on a Range Rover. Right, I'm just gonna do the the um, auxiliary, auxiliary belt while I'm here. So 15 mil spanner on there. Um, and you need to go in a clockwise direction, I believe. Yeah, so you need to go up. That slackens the tensioner off and obviously you can then slip the belt off. Obviously it's gonna be tight. It's gonna be tight. Belt, quite simple. Oh, got a few cracks in it. All right, the next thing we're going to remove is the top cover and this pipe here because you have to take this off to get this off, and obviously, you need to get this off to gain access to this. So, seven mil around there. Behind here, there's a bolt as well. So, this is a 10 mil bit of an awkward position, just that 10 mil. And then there's a pipe on the back here. Lovely. Okay, so, and then there's a bolt. I look really terrible, don't I? There you go. So we've got an eight mil on this end. I think that's it. So we've got, this pipe is floppy floppy, but it is attached down the back there somewhere. I have to obviously find out what that is. And then we've got these fuel hose, which look like they clip onto this cover. So I'm gonna have to unclip those. And then they're, they're clipped on down there as well. You can't really see that, can you, down there? So they need to be unclipped as well. So I'm gonna try and get as much of this out of the way as possible and take this upper cover off so I can time it. Right, so we've got these little clips here that clip on the pipe, the fuel pipes. These these break off, and they just snap off. These things here, they're supposed to pivot on there and then snap in on there, but they, they've snapped off. They snapped off at the top as well. I was careful on that one, it just snapped off. It's just old plastic, what can you do? So you've got those that come off and you've got uh, a cable there it clips onto this boost pipe which is here which goes up up there and then you've got a jubilee clip there's a jubilee clip on there where is it i can't see it through the camera can't see it through the camera where is it there see that can you there's a jubilee clip on the end of the pipe or there's a spring clip so i just undone the jubilee clip and then the pipe just popped out so hopefully that now will be able to wiggle that up and out of the way so we'll go back up the top pull that pipe off you can just see it up there look and the jubilee clip you wiggle that pipe out and then time it up. Right, so there's two, this cable here, there's two, there's one at the front that you can see that clips on, and there's one further around the back that also clips onto the pipe as well. 
so you need to remove that. I can't show that to you because it's right around the back. Right, and there's another clip here. Just this one here. So you need to take that off as well. Just take that off. So now we can gain access to the bolts. Uh, 10 mils, I'm assuming, will hold the upper cover on. So I'm going to whip those off. Right, so you've got three 10 mil bolts holding this on. You've got one here, one there, and there's one down in that far corner. And then that just comes off. And there's the timing belt. Right, so I've got a 22 mil ratchet on the lower pulley you can see down there and I've rotated it round until the little divot in that little cutout is lined up with the hole. So if I put this mirror down there you can see there look how it's lined up with the hole. So I've got a 6.5 mil drill bit and the 6.5 mil drill bit Six seem to be a little bit sloppy. So you can see that there. That's in the slot in there and it goes into the slot behind. So there you go. So basically that's timed up now. So I just need to take the uh, crankshaft pulley off I'll do with the, uh, the big gun. You have a dunker gun, that way you don't have to lock the crankshaft. And hopefully behind the sprocket, which doesn't actually show in here, it doesn't show you a clear picture, but I'll show it to you when I do it, of the slot in the crankshaft pulley. All right, so you need a long 22 for this. So I'm assuming this is the new bolt I've got in the kit. That's the crankshaft pulley. And then what we've got behind is the reluctor ring, which is for the crank sensor. You can see where this is notched. Can you see that? Okay, so that at the moment, that sprocket is freewheeling slightly so it can go left or right. So at the moment it's in the center. So when we put it back together, we need to make sure that that is back in the center, but I'll show you how I do that when I come to do it. All right, so now we've got that off, we've got the bolts that hold on the lower cover and I'm not sure if we can leave this in place. We'll find out. But obviously this needs to come off the cover. And then we've got that bolt. Should be if I've got them all. And then we'll cover removed. There we go. So we've got the iron up there. It's just slotted. Water pump. And then the tensioner. Lower cover off and get the coolant out of it in some controlled manner. I don't know if I need to actually take the engine mount off to get the belt off. Hmm, anyway. I've marked, I'll show you that in a second because I've put the camera in now, but 13 mil spanner on a detensioner. So I'm gonna get the tensioner detensioned, gonna slip the belt off. 
so I can do the water pump. I have marked this at the top with some uh, Tibex just to make sure it doesn't move. It does say in the directions to remove the crankshaft sensor, you can't see they're out of shot, but I don't know whether I'm gonna bother doing that. I might do, I might not do. So anyway, so 13 more spanner. There you go, there's the belt. Good to me. It's obviously worn. As you can see there, I've marked with some Tibex because this does move. So it has to sort of be in the middle of the keyway, sort of where that dot lines up. So technically, I probably don't have to actually remove the engine mount. I don't know if I'm going to or not, because I need to remove this tensioner up there. But I think I could just undo that bolt and it will slot out. So if I don't need to take the engine mount, I mean, I've got the belt off without removing the engine mount. So anyway, we'll do the water pump. Um, see, look, it's got, can you see that on there? PSA, FOMOCO. So it's a Ford, it's a Ford and Peugeot engine. Uh, I tried to undo the drain off off of the radiator, put a pipe on it, put it into a drain um, tin, but nothing came out. So I'm going to have to do it the messy way and I'm probably going to remove this, swing that out of the way just for the sake of the water really. And I'm just going to put the tin underneath it and I'm just going to let it all piss into there and because I'm not keeping it I'm replacing it because I've got replacement and obviously I've got the wet vac so I'm just going to do it the messy way because this even if I got it all out of the radiator it wouldn't have removed it all out of the block anyway so there's no way around it you're going to make a mess so that's the next thing we're going to do oh they 11s what okay so these where are you here they're 11 mil <laughs> 11 mil Starting a leak. It's starting a leaky leaky. This is gonna make a fing mess everywhere. Oh. Most of it's going in the pan. Now the question you've got to ask yourself, isn't there? Is there anything wrong with that water pump that's done 50,000 miles? Is this Land Rover, Range Rover, Ford water pump? going to be better than the aftermarket replacement probably not but you know it's just you just change it there you go there is the old water pump right so what i'll do is i'll give this a quick clean up it all looks quite clean anyway probably smear a little tiny tiny smear of gasket sealant both sides of the gasket clean it up dry it up whop it on so you don't need to see me do that put the pump back on as you can see there i've got the water pump in new water pump uh, i didn't talk them up i just done them up light hand tight with a 3 8 ratchet the tensioner i've taken off so we've got 13 mil bolt and then we've got the tensioner, so it just slides onto the stud. And then there's a little peg up there that this locates on. So it literally slides over a stud. And then that then screws on, and then that locates. So this is the, this is the old one. Up there, we've got the idler. So we've got an E4 
14 ratchet. I've already loosened it off. And then the whole thing comes out like so. The tensioner, you can just see that peg there. That's obviously the stud. And then just above it, I don't know if you can see, can you see that little nipple? That's what locates in that square peg of the tensioner. There's the new tensioner. It's tensioned up with the, with the pin already in it. And as you can see, that is what locates. So literally just slip that on, locate that with the peg, and then put the 13 mil on. So you've got to put a round peg in a square hole. That's in there. So that's that in. So all I need to do now is route the belt. So I'm going to put it with the right in so it's the right way round. Okay, so I've got the belt on. It's in between the two, it's obviously tension still pinned. Uh, this, the idler is tight. Obviously this is still loose with a pin in it. It's still timed at the top, it's wrapped around the bottom. It's on here. So what I've done on this lower pulley, it's off to one side. It's off to the far right hand side of this sprocket. And obviously it's slightly too far that way. So the idea is, is when you take the pin out of the tensioner, the belt, the tensioner is gonna push on the belt. It's gonna push this belt in, and in theory, it's gonna rotate this round to the correct time position. I'm just gonna pull this pin out. See, it's moved. But it's still not tensioned correctly yet. What we've gotta do is we've gotta get the arrow in, in line with the slot and what you do is you, you put an allen key in here and then you rotate it and what it does is it pulls this down and across so that pointer i can't really show you this because of the spring tension but then the pointer lines up in the center like that and then you do then you do the nut up so that's the idea so I couldn't video this because this just isn't enough room for my two arms in this camera. You can just see that pointer there. Okay, so what I've done is I've come just, it's not bang in the center of that square. It's slightly over tensioned by that tiny amount between so it's over to the side of the square rather than the center of the square. So what that basically means is because this belt is tight, it's a fresh, tight belt, when it started up and run for a while, it's obviously gonna stretch and slacken a fraction of a millimeter. So obviously that will bring the tension back to the center of that. It won't obviously won't move, but the belt will obviously be, will obviously grow slightly so i want it to be slightly un over tensioned by a fraction so when it stretches that millimeter it comes back to where it should be so that bolt up there in the center is tight so basically you just put the allen key in there six mil allen key in there and you just rotate it till that peg comes up line with that and you do it up and you just check to make sure that it lines up so that's it and then this down here My two marks are blob on where they are and we're in the centre of there. So it's, it's exactly where we need to be. So that's basically it. So that is the water pump done. That is the belt on. So obviously what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, six mil drill bit out, uh, probably put the lower cover on, put the crank uh, pulley on, the reluctor, the, um, the sensor, and I'm gonna turn it over a couple of times and make sure everything lines up, which I'm sure it will do. I just thought I'd cut in here and just, just explain something, just so you know where we all are. Because of the design of this, there's nothing at this point stopping the crank from moving. Up there, obviously, the, 
the pin is in the hole which is holding the camshaft which is holding the belt uh, which is holding the sprocket okay so none of this is going to move no matter what you do this is but the crank can still move okay now obviously undoing this crankshaft bolt and doing it up is going to potentially move the crankshaft which is why they say in the instructions you have to take out the starter motor and lock the flywheel so this does not move okay so i'm just going to give that as a uh, a warning or a caveat at this point that you are supposed to do that okay now i'm not doing that but i need to take precautions to make sure that this doesn't move when i do it up okay so we've got this reluctor ring on here which is keyway so that is set for the crankshaft timing or the crank, sens crank sensor okay now the, the crank pulley does have a keyway in it but it's not <laughs> it's not accurate in any way shape or form okay so you can't use this to time anything up okay so they give you a new bolt with loctite already on it so what's going to happen is is when you put this in here and you do it up and then this loctite starts to become stiff there is the potential that you're going to turn the crankshaft which you don't want to do so what i've done is i've wire walled wire walled wire brushed all of the loctite off of the bolt so now in theory that should go all the way home and tight without putting any excess pressure on the crankshaft but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put some liquid which it all starts out liquid anyway some liquid thread lock on here then put it in and obviously it will dry and then it will make a permanent you know lock in the thread so by the time i've screwed this in and i've got it tight and I get the gun on it and I tighten it, it's gonna be tight enough where everything's gonna try and wanna to move together rather than just a crank move because everything could be locked together. So I'm just gonna, I'm just explaining that to you now. It's just a word of caution. You don't wanna be cranking on this and trying to do it up and the crankshaft is trying to move in that slot and going slightly out of time. Whether it makes a massive difference, I don't know. I would imagine it would do being half a tooth out. You probably wouldn't notice it, but um, it obviously wouldn't be right. So, right, let me crack on and get this. We've got the crankshaft pulley, pulley done up with 10 billion nuggets. And the new belt is on. The new auxiliary belt, the lower cover. So, we're just going to stick this back on now. Then we're going to go up and put everything back together up there stuck this back on with some silicone put all the relevant clips and stuff just put a zip tie around there just to I put back on what I was snapped off and then zip tied the whole lot around so that's nice and secure pipe clips and stuff there's a clip there that goes around that hose up there various other clips and pipes and stuff that clip up so I've got to go up and do do the top ones so that's the engine cover back on that back on that back on, bolted back on there. The fuel pipe's clipped on. It's just put a zip tie around that just to hold those in because it's clipped in the other side. That rubber pipe there, the hose, is clipped into that plastic section. So that's it basically done. So all I need to do now is put the wheel arch liner back in. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it up I've already put coolant in it, so obviously that will have to bleed. I'll let it run for a bit, let it warm up, check the coolant level, put the arch liner back in. Wheel arch liner's all back in. All the clips are back in, put this trim back on, 
and then uh, just need to put the wheel on and torque it up and that's uh, just need to check the water level after it's warmed up and then that's it right well that's the cam belt completely done you can see I've been working out I've got grease all over me that's the cam belt and water pump completely done the water level I just need to just need to check it after a few days uh, but apart from that it should be fine and uh, yeah that's pretty much it I uh, hope you like the video click like subscribe all that all that good jazz thanks so much for watching cheers